Hey guys, what's up? Matt here and welcome to another episode of Coffee is for Closers. Special episode today with the French Savage. <laughs> oui. Welcome, Angelo. The, fr the French Savage. Thank Angelo. Thank you. Bonjour. Thank you guys. Bonjour à tous. Coaching client, oui. sales, sales professional, colleague, friend, coaching client, all the above. And Angelo. So welcome very welcome to the show. It's exciting to have you here. Thank you very much. It was on my target for 2021 and it's just the beginning of January. And yeah. here I am, really proud. Knock, Thank you very much. Knocking it out of the park early. So today what we're going to go over, guys, for everyone who's wondering, is we're going to talk about what it's like closing in Europe, what it's like closing in the second language, what it's like closing with an accent, okay? And then kind of the journey that Angelo has gone through over the last little bit. So stay tuned and cue the intro. If you listen to this podcast, you will make your first million within three years. I'm going to repeat that. You will make a million dollars within three years of the first episode you listen to. We don't want pikers. We're not here to save the manatees. We're here to make podcasts. You really want this. You listen and review. Put that coffee down. All right, we're back. Hello. Brilliant. Let's, let's uh. kick on. <laughs> so uh, you, you mentioned just a minute ago that you've been looking forward to coming on this for, an a, for ages and it was a huge goal for you. <laughs> Why is that? No, um, this was just a, just a goal for 2021. And I, I say to myself, one, one day I would be, I will be on that podcast. <laughs> and I, yeah. I remember last week I said to Matt, hey, uh, can I can I come to the podcast? Oh yeah, definitely. Boom. Yeah. So anybody yes, else asks me, I'm definitely going to say no. So don't just hit me up. <laughs> I think the lesson there is uh, if you have goals and you want to achieve them, start by asking. <laughs> yeah, you should probably try. <laughs> Take yeah, action. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, it's good. No, of course we're gonna have Angelo. For those of you, I'll give everyone a big background. Angelo is is a is a very good closer. Someone who I've coached personally, and someone who also kind of works within the sales side of an organization. And is starting to head up, I guess, the new division, which would be called Sales Sniper Europe, which we just got our first client, which is really cool. And uh, has a very, very similar mindset when it comes to sales. And I, I think has an interesting story, interesting background. Um, and I thought it'd be good to have him on the podcast because it's good to see people who like, like, it's not like you were fed with a silver spoon. It's not like you went through and, you know, kind of it wasn't like a meteoric rise or anything like that, but it's like you just put the work in and you're someone who stuck with it and you're someone who found something you're good at, something you're passionate with, and you took the opportunities. And one of the things that I like to talk about, I thought about writing a book years ago called The Path of Least Resistance. And it's not necessarily the easiest path, but it's the path of like, oh, that makes sense. I'll go that way. Ch chapter one, get a ghostwriter. <laughs> Yeah, Path that, was, that was that was gonna be that was that was gonna be it. I, I even had a go like I didn't even write this book. That was gonna be like this and in subtext anyway. Um, it's gonna be me on like a lazy boy anyway. <laughs> but I think like yeah, you're definitely someone who is like oh I have identified a problem. What's the best solution? I shall do the solution and the problem shall be fixed. <laughs> and it really is that simple. And it's about taking action on yourself. And we were talking before we hit record is, you know, you wanted to talk today about like what happens when you take action on yourself and you actually start doing the things you need to do. So, but anyway, I'd love to hear a little background of, I, I guess, your, your kind of uh, like a synopsis of your career over the last, say, I think 18 months ago, you were a security guard, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I remember and now that you, day. Now you, now you, I think you probably made more in a month than what you would have in an entire year. So there you go. The fun story is one day I made more in one day than in one year in total commission. <laughs> and I told myself, <laughs> so what, what a day. What a day. Yeah. And yes, I took my first call on the 3rd of March of 2019. Okay. So very soon it will be two years Almost in my two sales years, career. Right? Nice. Almost two years. Yes, yeah. life can change so quickly. That's it why really nothing, does. nothing. Yeah. Yes, nothing is written on the on the marble. Nothing is written. It can you also can you can, it can also stay very stagnant if you uh, don't take action for a very, very, very long time. When people get comfortable and and complacent with life, right? I did. 
Mm. I did maybe for 10 years. Yeah, I think we've all been guilty of that in the past. I've heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I saw it in the dictionary once, right? <laughs> yeah, I've heard of this. So I'm, not, not, I'm, not, I'm not quite aware of it, but I've, I've heard of it. Um, okay, cool. So uh, nearly two years ago, you were a security guard. Is that right? Absolutely. What was your wage? What was your wage back then? Um, if I if I work on a on a vacation day, whoa, I get one hundred euros more. So it's like fifteen hundred euros a month. A month. And uh, yes, I get my salary on the ten of the month and the twenty of the month, nothing on the bank account. And I was crying to my wife. Oh, uh, I am so. Clever! I am so smart. Why? Why can I get money for that? And here I am, right now. <laughs> okay, so how did how did you then? Did you go through like Dan Locks? Were you one of those guys, or which is? I don't think it's a bad thing. I'm just I'm just wondering, kind of, how did you then? Because I didn't know high ticket closing was a thing until, you know, it's probably around a similar time. How did you get involved in sales, basically? Mm, it, I get um a sport betting Facebook page about ice hockey. That bring me to digital marketing because I built an audience and uh, I get interaction with people. So uh, only via text message, I closed my first package for myself and it was 300 a month just for my advice. Then a friend of mine has a a barbershop and I help him with the digital marketing, Google My Business and stuff like that. Uh, I went to, hey, I'm a consultant now because that day he gave me 200 euros for that. And I said, 200 euros for my brain? Wow, 200 euros with my brain? I was so happy. I I wrote consulting on Facebook, uh, on Google, and uh, I found some events. And uh, I joined his group. I read some books. I understood a lot of things about digital marketing, but I was not a consultant. I was a sales guy. I knew it. So I I clicked on Dan Lok YouTube channel. I I liked the content. I went on a call with someone from his team. Too bad for them. She was awful. Uh, she was reading a script. And I hear that. I heard that. And I'm not a good closer. I was not a good closer at that time. But I heard the script. I hear the script. So uh, I decide. And my wife told me no to Dan. So I, I listen to my wife always. Hello, baby. <laughs> and um, I found later Eli Wide. And mm, it was okay. uh, completely the opposite. And uh, I, I enrolled in this program. I didn't have the money at the time. I borrow the money from my son bank account. My wife almost kiss, kill me. I but could imagine. I am right now. I yeah. could imagine. And, uh, I she, I've, I've she also have done that. Yeah. Yeah. She she threw at me, you know the. <clears throat> please don't don't do a mistake. Oh yes, I guess. <laughs> Interesting. And voila. Okay. And, and then, then the rest is history, right? Yeah, I mean. And then and then I'm assuming through Eli's stuff you saw sales mentor stuff. You probably yeah, did it, a little bit of their stuff. And then how, how did you come? How did you come to hear about? I guess us and. Was it through Eli? Because we, 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 we used to be very, not that we're not affiliated or close to Eli anymore. I was literally speaking to him like an hour ago. But, <laughs> um, but like we used to do it. We were going to do a, an, like an event with him and then COVID. We had a plan. We, we've, I think we sold 82 seats. Yeah, we sold at, a lot of tickets. Uh, I, think, I, think, I think a grand, a pop. Um, and that was when I was a nobody. I'm still yeah. a nobody, but I'm slightly less of a nobody in a very particular circle. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, okay. So, how did you hear about us? Was it through Eli? Mm, I think it's wh- when you follow someone and you look like this person, you you want to be around people like you. And it's like I don't want to 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 sound woo woo, but it's like attracting people like you mm. and being in the same circle and see your, seeing your stuff, seeing your content, seeing how you do things. And you, um, you be attracted or you be rejected. And I was attracted. I was hooked from the from the beginning with you. And I wanted to also to create a sales agency in France. You have a sales agency. Uh, I wanted to know more. 
And that's the reason I came to you on Messenger at the first time. Mm. Just uh, going back to when you, you got on board with Eli and started doing his course, tell us a little bit about how it was for you learning uh, sales in a second language. I imagine that could be quite difficult. What was that? Like, yeah. t- tell us a bit about that. Uh, is it, well, actually, I, I have a quick question. Good question. In, in terms of like, in, in term, we'll get to that for one second. In terms of like the difference between French and English, like, can you directly sort of translate or is it like similar to Spanish where the verbs and everything is kind of mixed up? So like certain analogies might not land very well, but just because mm. of how they're told. Um, it's a really legitimate question. And I, I have to warn people here because um, I don't translate every word in my mind. And I have my own background. I have my own stories. I have my own analogies. Yeah. And... Uh, analogies came from reading and my own life. For mm. for example, you you have an analogy about uh, you see the the military plane who crashed and you have to say something to the pilot even if he's a superior of yourself. You see these analogies of yourself. Yeah. Uh, yes, and I have this. I cannot say this because it's not true. So I have to build my own analogy. Yeah. And my my scarves here is from a car accident with my father-in-law. And he he slept dri- while driving and we we crashed on a on a big tree. And I remember that day because uh I I told him hey instead of wow we are crashing. And now when I'm people on the phone and they are telling me, uh, oh, I cannot do this or I cannot do that. Or do you think I'm not an imposter? I have to say something to this person because they are lying to themselves. And I can, I can bring back this memory to, to, to get the authority, mm. the authority to say, please, don't push it yourself. Mm. I okay. had the exact same conversation with Will today. Very, very similar. I was like, some, I was like being nice isn't being nice always. Yep. If someone has shit breath and you don't tell them, you're not nice. You're just a weak dick. Like, you should just tell them, hey, man, your breath's a bit shit. You should probably brush your teeth. Oh, thanks, man. Like, thanks. Now they can fix it. Yeah. But if all we just go, fuck, Angelo's breath is fucking stank today and we don't tell him, then he doesn't have an opportunity to fix it. Like, is that really what you do with a friend? Yeah. Is that, right. how, is that how you want to be treated? That's why I tell James he's short, so he can fix it. <laughs> yeah, because I can grow at any time. You know, it's it's really easy, right? You really, it's just a mindset thing that's holding you back. <laughs> Maybe I can NLP it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you see that comment? Yeah. Anyway. You can NLP that. You know, but I think it's true, man. I think like, you know, I think the, the, the analogies that I say, uh, people do just kind of use them. And I'm like, hey, like, use them, like. I fucking like I, I made them up. Some of them I probably heard through the ether. I've made some of them up myself. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad, whatever. But like they're just to convey a concept. And I think that if you can look at the concept that you're trying to convey, like the metaphor, and then put it into your own words, like your level of tonality and, and how you how you do it will be so much more powerful. So that that's a really good point. Like, and especially I think adopting it to another language is like, you're not going to be able to just translate, hey, picture yourself on an island surrounded by... You're not going to be able to do that, right? Because it might not work. It might work if it's German or something like that because it's so similar. But if it's like a if it's like a Latin root language, it, it might not really work. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think that's a good point. And so going back to James's, like, what's it like, I guess, one, closing deals in multiple languages, but also like learning in English and then applying in French? Just... Because you do sales calls in French and you do sales calls in English, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But most Savage. of my sales calls are in French. Yes. Most of my sales calls are in French. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so l- learning in English is um, okay. I'm just I'm just learning. I don't have to speak a lot, and who cares? I uh, I have something on my on my whiteboard behind me. It's um, F. Y, E, so it could be fuck your excuses. I'm sorry for my language, but it's also fuck your excuses. Have you listened to this fucking podcast? <laughs> yeah, man, we we actually don't swear on here. We'll have to beep. Yeah, it's out. really offensive, man. Yes, I'm Pardon sorry. Pardon my French. Yeah, 
<laughs> I, that's a very offensive to excuses. I don't yeah. think they'll be happy with us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the little E. We have the little E on all of our podcasts. Anyway, <laughs> fucking keep going. Yeah, so, and it's also fuck your English because I don't want to rely on it and to say, oh no, uh, I cannot speak English so my career is over and I cannot be international. Who cares? Because people can understand me and if I can change one life, one more life and if this person doesn't understand me in my own language, I have the moral duty to change yes. this life Absolutely. in another language. Yeah, that's a pretty strong mindset that you, you take into that. You know, you can tell that you're incredibly driven. Yeah. I think the whole, like, it is it is, it is my duty. I, I take the same thing into a sales call because, like, you know, like it's it's annoying when you can see that someone is just putting up barriers and obstacles in their own way to, like, not do something. It's like if you look at a family member who's always been overweight and you can watch them do the New Year's resolutions and you can watch them. Somebody in my family is overweight right now and trying to lose weight, right? And, like, we go out to dinner, and I just watch him eat shit food. I'm just like, well, bro, like, how many times am, do I have to tell you? Like, that's just going to make you fat. You have to be good. You have to be perfect. And it is frustrating, right? And so you almost feel like when you're selling, and you're selling a good program, I think that's the key, when you're selling a good program, and you believe in it, and you can see that this will actually really, or put the person in the best opportunity to be able to solve their problems. It's like, dude, stop putting shit in your own way. Stop prioritizing Netflix. Stop prioritizing fast food. Stop prioritizing... And I, I got that drive from fitness, right? Because, like, man, people will do anything to not exercise, <laughs> you know? And I, I fall into that trap as well. But, like, people will do anything to avoid the physical pain of exercise. So it's really interesting. But I think that's a, it's a good mindset. Like, you have a duty to do this for somebody. Yeah. Which kind of gives you, like, the power to, for lack of a less nuanced term, kind of tee off on them and go, hey, man, like, here's a mirror. Have a good fucking long, hard look at yourself. And like, what 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 actions need to be taken for you to actually get a result? What's it like closing with an accent? Do you find do you get any pushback? Because I think people use it as a fucking crutch. I don't think it makes a fucking difference. I um, find like with accents when I listened, when I speak to you, Angelo, and I speak to guys like Marco and and Talos and all those guys with accents that that do close, I pay far more attention to the mm. words you're saying because I need to, because there can be that gap. And you pick up, you know, like I, I said the other day when I was speaking to you, when we had that call, is like you might not understand a lot of the phrases I say because they're common in uh, in our culture. Common dog fuck. Yeah. yeah. And and you have certain <laughs> things. And when you say them, it like really, you have to pay attention, have to think, oh, okay, he means this by this. And because of that, I find it it's far more interesting to grasp what someone's saying because you're far more involved in the conversation. Yes. Yes. P people get more attention. They take attention at me. They take care of me during the call. Okay. Except, uh, except some people, especially real estate brokers. Okay. Yeah. I get it. Shit. But yes, yeah. but I have also. Yeah, some people have, are assholes. Yeah. Yes, pe 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 people don't have to 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 change who they are for me. I have to yeah. adapt. I, uh, I come to English and, okay, I have to understand everything. And if something I don't understand, I play with, okay, what do you mean exactly by that? Mm. And they can, they can expand and I'm not losing control. Mm. But the funny thing is people in the United States, they try to speak French with me. Every people who I speak with try to speak French with me. Yes, so it breaks the ice immediately. And, uh, oh, you're French? How do you know? Please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you know? <laughs> I'd love yeah. to uh, explore something you just said a little in a little bit more uh, detail because I think it'd be really important to people listening, particularly those with an accent. You said a phrase there. Um, as if you were on a sales call where you you really put some tonality. Has um, getting the tonality right been one of the biggest challenges learning sales with an accent? Like how do you adapt? Because when you hear like Matt, Jeremy, Eli and that utilize that tonality, it's done in a very specific accent. So I imagine that could be harder to master because you can't replicate it as a script to get that right. Tell us a, a little bit about how you uh, did well with that. I don't want to say I am a lucky guy, but I am a lucky guy, sorry. <laughs> um, my tonality 
is I think is one of my strengths because it's natural. I don't yeah. work on it. It's just about my intention. I can stop my phrases. I can stop my cadence. I can speed up my cadence. And I don't think about the word who, who are coming in my mind. I'm just thinking about what's my intention for every sentence or every question. And it's helped me to regulate the cadence, my tone. And if I really care about the people, the tonality is matching. Naturally. Yeah, it's much better. Yeah. Well, everyone's good at tone. It's just learning how to turn it on. Yeah. Right. Like everyone, everyone has the ability to sound contemplative or to sound bereft or to sound tired or to sound questioning or curious, all that kind of stuff. Everyone's got that ability because if you are curious, you sound curious. You know what I mean? The, the key is like, I need to be genuinely curious. That's the, that's the key or at least be able to muster that up, you know? So I like, uh, you know, I, I know like, cause I obviously coached you. Like for me, I like to put tonal cues in the script as like a, a bit of a cheat while you're developing your kind of natural curiosity, tonality, all that kind of stuff. Um, you said something with the, the reader, the, the readers, <laughs> for those of you reading the transcript, I think that the, uh, like the listeners, you said that you made more in one day than you did in an entire year. Walk us through that. Cause that's, that's pretty cool, man. I remember when you told me that I was like, it's huge. Fuck yeah. I told James, you nearly shit his pants. I said, hi. And then, <laughs> and then, and then I told him, right? So <laughs> I was implying that you just randomly shit your pants, James. There you go. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, so yeah, most things go over your head. Oh, but I'm tr- anyway. Um, so, 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 tell us, man. What, like, what was what happened? Tell us all about it. Oh, it was um, it was for my my previous influencer, and um, it was a, I remember it was a Sunday, and I get eight sales on that day on nine call at seventeen k euros, and that day when I calculate my commissions, I was like. Oh my God. Yeah, because you did a good job. Oh you calculated God. paid in full bonuses, volume bonuses. Oh, it was it, 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 it was just paid in full because we don't yeah. have a payment plan for that uh, for that uh, package. So yeah. it, and it was also funny because they paid one k deposit to get on a call with me, and they knew the price before. The French so, <laughs> prince of paid in full road is French coming for you, brother. Piff. <laughs> the French prince of piff. We need to have a piff off. The Black Prince and the French Prince. I like it. That's cool, man. And like that just goes to show like, obviously, do you, do you feel like you have a natural affinity to sales or do you just feel like you learn the right skills? Good question. Oh, yeah, good, good question. question. Uh, I think everyone can be a closer because every day we close people. We, we, close, we close also our kids. But... Every, everyone can get to two, three, four K a month. Mm. But what separates uh, to 10, 20, 30 K a month? Uh, it's an internal drive and it's ability to, to change a little bit who you are to adapt. Mm. It's like being, um, uh, when I speak with someone who is really enthusiastic, uh, I have, uh, I'm going to accelerate my cadence and I want to be on the same point. And when I speak to a woman who's really calm, who is really um, a little voice, and I slow down my cadence to be on the same path, to be on the same way, and connection is better. And it's not manipulating. It's not manipulating. It's just being on the same page, like mirroring. Yeah, it's making and someone it's comfortable. Fun. Yeah. Yes, and it's funny because I I have never learned NLP. It's something yeah, natural. I need, I, yeah, neither do I. Yeah. yeah. I have, for reference. Yeah. What do you think of it? I uh, I think, my honest opinions, I think quite a lot of it is complete bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> having, but, having absolutely no experience in it whatsoever, I also yeah, think the same thing. I, Just because every sales guy that I know who's like an NLP guy is garbage. I, um, I w- wouldn't use it for sales. I, I think it has its place. And I think um, it can be really, really beneficial to a lot of people. Because I think something that those people do is really strong is it they can almost sell, not as in like picking up the phone, making a sale. They can almost sell people on self-belief to the point where um, someone's going in for a problem that they want to get fixed through NLP 
the typically the practitioners are very good salespeople and they can uh, incite a self-belief in someone that what they say is going to change their mind and is going to change something in them. And when you believe that that's going to happen, typically people start to live their lives as if those changes have occurred and therefore it helps them in whatever they think of. So I think it can be really beneficial in that sense. But I think in the way they do it, it's bullshit. Like I went in once and um, they told me, yeah, you know, these problems are caused by past life. And I just laughed and went, fuck off, I'm out. Give me my money back. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, that is bullshit. <laughs> even if that was true, there is not a fucking way that you could prove that or even have the slightest amount of evidence that what yeah, you're saying is, is completely That's wrong. an unprovable. But it's exactly. also, it can't be proved, but it can't be disproved. Yeah, yeah. So that's the that's that's just a fucking snake oil tactic. Yeah. Uh, after that, I just went, man, you guys are fun. <laughs> like, that is such bullshit. I guess I haven't had the best experience with NLP people. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. Most of them, in my opinion, the ones that I've met have just been charlatans. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. there's good and bad in every industry. I agree. But I, I don't think it helps in sales because I haven't met any really good salespeople who have, like, a comprehensive NLP background and use it. But I think, like, it's funny because people just go, oh, that's an NLP technique. Well, no, it's just a fucking normal communication technique. It is. Like, I'm going to use a metaphor to place somebody in their own skin so that they can do it themselves. Like, that's not an NLP tactic. That's just a fucking, I, I don't want to piss somebody off tactic. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And so, like, there's so many things that, like, people go, oh, did you learn that in NLP? It was like, no, I learned that when I was in fucking kindergarten mm, yeah. because, I, because I wanted to have candy for lunch. Yeah. And I convinced my parents to let me. You know what I mean? I've like, seen um, a lot of like really huge changes in people that, you know, go through some of those techniques and processes. Yeah. Right. But does it work for the reason that they say it works? Maybe not. Does it matter? Not really. If it makes someone a better person, then fucking happy days. You know? I think if somebody wants to change, they will. You yeah. know, you could, you could have them like knit in a quarter for 45 minutes and I agree. Yeah. yeah. They would change. You know what I mean? Well, anyway, we're getting sidetracked. It's I, very, I think, very unlike us to have it go on a tangent. Yeah, so. I think I that you can have just as powerful transformations by having a conversation with you on the phone trying to buy something. Yeah. If you think NLP is the greatest thing on the planet, I want you to email C C I F C podcast at com, and I will have you on and I will debate you. <laughs> Knowing nothing about it. We'll just do it or hit me up on Facebook, or whatever, go to the, go to the sales sniper or, or go to YouTube, whatever, like fun debate, good, good times. I'm not, I'm a nice guy, but I, I'd be interested to see their perspective. And then if, if I can't just do more in a 45 minute sales call, I would, I would like to see that. But yeah. Yeah. I, I've seen, listen to some of the sales calls that you've done and I've seen far more powerful changes to people's mindset doing that, that would rival, you know, going to a three day workshop and, opening up and having someone, you know, hit hit your subconscious and try and make change that way. I think, you know, but both have their place and it just depends on the person, right? But anyway. Um, yeah, let's go back to Angela. So, okay. So you wanted to start your own uh, sales agency in France. You're doing well. By that stage, like, how are you doing? Like, what were you, what were you pulling in on a monthly? I, I actually started my agency without any processes so i didn't understand anything but okay maybe i can bring one closer get five percent commission on him uh, no training and no nothing and uh, it's a it's a bad business so yeah. i had to change this i get a good commission with my current clients so good commission uh six seven eight thousand euros a month uh, with good sales with a, a good product and i try to get uh, 1k or 2k per closer because I have people around me and I'm kind of the best in France. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, I, I would. So I would say that's an established, known. Mm, I'd say yes. if Napoleon was a closer, you'd probably do better. Sorry. <laughs> oh, don't worry. It's all good. It's a joke, you missed it. Sorry. So <laughs> I I have to put myself on the bigger stage like uh, building an agency and provide good people and good closer uh, on the phone to change life and build also a business. Uh, just taking calls can bring to some commissions, but get a, a real team, a real structure will get me to the promised land. Mm. Okay. 
I, I, I think you've got like a one of the biggest factors outside of pure sales skill. And we talk about it a lot is like the consistency, the congruency, and really the mindset on how you keep that stable going into sales calls so you can be consistent long term. And your mindset is one of the key factors that's allowed you to take those steps and step out of your job and move into it. And one of the biggest things that you teach uh, your guys that you do sales training with is not just the sales skills, but it's the mindset. What are your biggest key factors that you teach like around your mindset to help your team crush deals? I don't like to teach sales skills because it's all about how you show up during the call. It's all about to lead people to somewhere you have already been. And Except it's been congruency. Yeah. Yes, it's congruency. If you if you want, and I love this sentence, I love this hook from you, Matt. Uh, if you want people to take action for you, you have to take action on your own goals. Because uh, how how do you respond to someone who say, oh, okay, I, I always take 24 hours to, to make that kind of decision. Oh, okay. Perfect. That, that makes sense for me. No. No, that don't make sense for me because I don't take 24 hours to take a decision. So in my own world, I don't understand that. But if it's common for me, okay, like me, we are, we are the same together. But mm. no. And that, yeah, that's what doesn't... I teach. Yeah. Okay. And like, I guess like, you, like, what do you, what was the kind of, cause you were doing like 8K a month. And now you're obviously doing a hell of a lot more than that. What was the big shift you think that kind of got you there? It's it's not just one shift. It was about diffusing objections before they came. It was about uh, getting more, not not being sold on bullshit uh, objections. Uh, mm. It was about generating my own leads through the Facebook group of my client. Mm. Because at the end of the day, if I have, it, it's important here. If I have one more close per week for one thousand dollars commission, it's fifty two thousand a year with just one more close. And who, so who is I... responsible for my yes, who is responsible for my result? I am. You... I cannot wait to get leads in my mo- oh please oh feed me, please feed me. No, I can feed That was the I first also... session, the first session we did, that's what we went over. Abs- absolutely. The first session. Yeah. Is it the and best way to increase your commissions is to increase your opportunities straight yeah, away. That's it. Because you can always get better, but getting better is the slow way. If you close at 20% and you want to make 10 more deals, you know what you got to do. <laughs> you got to have fucking 200 sales goals. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's the way it is or whatever the fucking number is. But yeah, like, you know, so when I think when, when you signed up for coaching, you were doing pretty well, but you wanted to come and do coaching on how to run an agency. And I basically just said, well, I hate to break it to you, dude, but you're not you're not good enough to lead the agency. Yes, you <laughs> you told me. Uh, oh, Angelo, what are your numbers with mouth? I close for 200K, rookie number. What? <laughs> so, so, sorry? Uh, and uh, I think this kind of um, response can reject people. But I was hooked, already hooked. Okay, uh, rookie number. Oh, really? Rookie number? Really? (laughs) Okay, sign me up. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think like if it's true, that's the thing, right? Like people, some people like being the tallest puppy. You know what I mean? Some people like being the best in the room. Mm. Some big, big fish, little pond, right? Yeah, man. And then some people want to find the bigger pond. Like the way that Marco puts it, he goes, it's time to come play in the NBA. You've been playing street ball long enough. Like you want to be the best guy on the playground and you want to come play in the NBA. It's a different game, right? And so I think when you're around people that are doing big numbers and, you know, it's big, it's big numbers for, and, you know, even like, you know, Marco doing a million dollars a month, it's big numbers for the industry because of the size packages that we sell. But you might get someone who sells B2B SaaS deals and they might do 20 million a month. Now, they wouldn't make as much commissions as Marco does. You know what I mean? But because the commissions in the coaching industry are really high, second only to really real estate in terms of like percentages, because you get, might get five or six percent in a real estate deal, which is fucking crazy <laughs> when you're looking at a $15 million deal. But anyway, moving on. 
So I think, yeah, that whole step up and wanting wanting to be around people who are better than you would, and just being open to going like, oh, well, like I'm doing well, but that's in context. Yeah. You know, I'm doing well in context. Other people, We've had people come and we've had people join the team and not like it at all. And because they, they went from being, even Jeff, like, I mean, if Jeff's listened to this, he went from being the top producer in his to being like just one of the guys in our organization. And it like fucked with his head. And like, but he's, he saw it and he stuck, stuck with it and he's getting through that. But like, that, and that's fair, you know what I mean? Because it's a different headspace to be in. And I think it's difficult for some people. You know, some guys we've had on come on who said that they were fucking savages and closed at like ridiculously low percentages. And we had to have conversations, just ended up quitting. It's like they, they quit. They didn't quit because they didn't work. You know, they quit because they just weren't good enough. And then they went they, to they other quit because they really. recognized that they would have been fired and weren't willing to put in the hard work to get better because it would have you know? taken too long. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so it's, 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 it's very interesting that mindset of being like, okay, like I'm, I'm happy to accept the fact that I can do better and I'm happy to, to do what it needs to be and put myself in a position where I can be potentially uncomfortable. And what, well, you know, and someone says that 24 hour thing, one of the things I said, well, maybe it's time to make an uncharacteristic decision so you can get an uncharacteristic result. And um, I think that's one thing that you've done very well. And I think that's one thing that, I, I, that I'm good at as well. And same, same with James and Marco and Will and all the guys who I think are, you know, good salespeople and good business operators are people who are willing to like really back themselves 100%. And that I think is one of the keys to closing is like, if you don't back yourself, then who will? And if you can't back yourself, how can you convince other people to do the same? Absolutely. You're a new closer out there and you're a guy who's been in the game for a couple of years now, successful. You're averaging, I think, over twenty thousand euro a month now, close to thirty thousand yes. euro a month. You made seventy three thousand euro in December, so Absolutely. there you go. It, Throw a big old money dick on the table. Well, well played. <laughs> Making so much money, you can move back to Paris. Uh, it's not no, it's not Paris. It's a so, so for France. But I, I'm, I'm coming back. I live in Malta now, and we're coming back to France uh, to spend. Uh, to spend money <laughs> because we can buy something here. Yeah, where there is nothing here in Malta, uh, and my, my my family is not happy. So I will. Uh, the house is where everything everyone is happy. I'm just happy with what I do. But if my wife and my kids are not happy, I can work from. Uh, give me give me a good Wi-Fi connection, and I can work on on the tree. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, that's that's the most beautiful thing. But like, so what's your advice to like, you know, young sales guy or like up and coming sales guy, listen to this podcast. A lot of people are like, you know, who listen to this or relatively new to the industry or just potentially haven't quite found the, 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 like the click moment yet to get themselves from the 5k a month to the 15k a month. Cause that's a, that's a big, that's a good jump to make. So like, what's your advice for those people and what, like, what are some tangibles that they can take away from this to really start moving in the right direction? I think it's a, it's how I went so fast. It's paying people who have already done what you want to achieve and being around them, but being around them for free, it's not being around them. It's just following. What about, what about being actively be, uh, with them? So uh, paying someone who have already been where you want to be, it's the key to success too, because you have a lot of, you don't know what you don't know. Mm. And if you if you try to find out or to 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 understand everything, you will just understand your own world. What what about what you don't see? You don't see it because you don't know it exists. Mm. And I came to you for for one thing, and I now I I know a lot of things, and it was not on the it was not on the mobile contract. It's because someone who are, who have already done what I want to do, to do. Uh, you expand um, my brain. You expect you you expand brains, and there is no there is new light in my brain. Yes, cool, I man. I see a lot of things. Yes, I see a lot of things now. That's awesome. I've got one last question for you. And um, we we've seen like a lot of people don't go down the path of sales that that do have foreign accents or are like fresh off the boat, new to Australia, new to the US, new to the Western world. What would you say to those young guys who have thought about going into sales, but 
maybe weren't as confident because they their English wasn't perfect or they didn't or they had an accent. Like, what would you say to those guys? Just one question: What possibly what possibly can go wrong? What can go wrong? Exactly. You, What's the worst? Yes, you. Yes, you you can say whatever you want. In uh, I don't speak English very well. I think uh, I was thinking, oh, I'm fluent in English. Oh, not because my level is just intermediate. But I can be coach in English. I can take a, dis- a, di- a full discussion with you in English. I can make a podcast in English. I can take a sales coach in English. And uh, I remember in high school, I get a, a very bad mark in English. So what? So what? Yeah, <laughs> make an eighty grand a month. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think as well. I think you're afforded a longer rope if you have an accent in terms of like you can make a mistake and then go back and redo it. So they go, I'm sorry, like well, what did you mean by that? And you go, Oh, I meant this. And you can say it in a simpler way. I listen to some of Marco's calls and I'm like, what the fuck are you saying? Yeah, I have no idea. How- <laughs> like sometimes I'm like, that doesn't make any grammatical sense, but I get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I afford him the the sometimes he messages me. And he's one of the people, Marco, if you're listening, this this is a life. You send, he sends one line messages, like yeah, three. And, and like he goes, six of he them. He goes, type, send, type, send, type, send, instead of typing a paragraph. But that's how he talks as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's sort of like that staccato kind of like small things at a time because like he learned English from TV. You know what I mean? But like you always understand what he's trying to say. His tonality is brilliant when he's selling. Everything about it is really, really good, but it's funny because his word choice is so different to what I would use. But what, what, but what comes out means the same. You know what I mean? So like I almost universal I just, yeah, language almost. Yeah, you know, people are using it as a crutch to just not try. Like if you think a problem is bigger than yourself, you just don't even try and fix it. If you're fat and you blame genetics, you'll never try and fix it. If your business is in the tank and you blame the economy, you're never going to try and fix it. And like, just fucking have a crack. What's the worst that can happen? And that's what I think Dan Locke did so well, was that his course was only two and a half grand. And although, like, it wasn't great, I think it, it, did, I think it opened the eyes of a lot of people that there was a possibility and there was a world out there that we didn't previously know. And I think, to be honest, he was probably one of the pioneers of, of the actual industry. Because, like, I didn't know a fucking anything about closing. And I remember calling, calling you and going, hey, have you heard of this Dan Locke guy? thinking about doing this course. And the only reason I didn't do it is because I didn't have the money for the two grand and the sales mentor course came up and it was 97 bucks. So like, that's, that's what it was. So, you know, in saying that I've got a YouTube video coming up, we're going to tear that dude to pieces. But anyway, <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, man, like stay tuned. Shit yeah. sales process Saturdays coming out soon. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I think that's great advice. I think like, I think you're an inspirational dude. I think you're a really good dude. As you know, I like you. Um, I like working with you, which is why we're going into business together. But, and I think it's, um, I think it's a perfect like story in terms of somebody closing. Like it's very similar to my story where it's like only started a little while ago, but really like went all in didn't just try and float around the fringes. Like when you found something, you paid for it, you wanted to do it, you threw yourself into it and you backed yourself. And from there you were successful. And yes, part of the reason is because you did those programs and learned those things. But part of the reason as well is the fact that you just were willing to back yourself and actually fucking do it, which meant that you had the mentality where you should do that because it's for the best. And you could back it up because you did it yourself. And then that gave you a higher level of conviction and confidence to transfer into your sales calls, into your prospects and help them make the right decision. So it's a big flow on effect. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on today, Angel. It's uh, yeah, been for, an interesting chat. I, yeah. I've enjoyed it and hopefully as much as what the listeners have. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care if they enjoy it. I enjoyed it. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. I do this, thank, thank I do this podcast much. for me. I don't know about you, James. I just... We might as well try and monetize the shit that we talk on a daily basis anyway. Kind of like good cop, bad cop, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Thanks very much. Make sure that you um, – we appreciate you guys so much. And, uh, in, 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 you know, oh, out of respect go. for that appreciation, I'd love you to just tap the subscribe button. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you slap like, maybe tickle the little notification bell. Go on to our closing code Facebook group. 
so you can see us. You know, we have six lives or seven lives a week in that group. It's crazy. Um, one in French. All free, yeah. One in French, eight lives eight a week. Eight now, yeah. They're all free if you want to watch them, if you want to participate in the role plays. It's only 50 bucks a week Aussie. That price will be going up soon. So if you're listening to this, it's probably middle of February. So in March, it's gone up. I hate to break it to you, but I'm raising the price. But yeah, just go in there, man. Like there's literally, there's no reason why you can't get better at closing just being in that group and just absorbing all the information there. So if you're struggling, like, and you're not in there and you're not, you know, Fuck, 50 bucks a week. If you can find cheaper sales training where you get taught by a coach in multiple languages, <laughs> you, you let me know. I'll sign up to it. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks very much for coming. Thank you, Angelo. Very much appreciate my friend, James, as Thank always. You. Fuck you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. <laughs>